So, so far, uh, what we have talked about are a couple of analysis. So the first uh, analysis, at least inferential analysis or inferential statistics that we've talked about is t-test. And of course, there are several variations of t-test, including t-test for single sample, which is our alternative for z-test, t-test for independent sample, which you use when um, our data set come from two separate samples that have not been matched. And then we have t-test for paired samples, and we use that when our two sets of data come from either the same sample or two separate samples that have been matched for the purpose of controlling or a an extraneous variable. And we use t-test regardless of what kind of t-test that is. We use t-test when we are examining the relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. Um, and specifically, when our independent variable is dichotomous, uh, meaning to say it is a categorical variable that has two levels, and our dependent variable is a continuous variable. So by continuous, meaning to say, uh, we're talking about scores uh, that we derive from either an interval scale or a ratio scale. Them being interval or ratio, them being scores, them being scalar, that means to say that we can compute for uh, mean and standard deviation. And we simply examine the relationship between this dichotomous variable and this continuous uh, variable by examining the difference uh, between the means of the continuous variable when grouped according to the levels of our dichotomous variable. So that is how we test the relationship and then we determine the significance of such uh, and then make a judgment later on. And then the next uh, thing that we talked about is ANOVA, particularly one-way analysis of variance. And one-way ANOVA is used under these circumstances. When you have one independent variable, you have one dependent variable, and you want to examine their relationship. The independent variable is categorical. The only difference here is that this categorical variable may not be dichotomous. So we need to say there could be two or more levels of this categorical variable while our dependent variable remains to be continuous. So again, these are, these are variables that are measured either uh, via an interval scale or a ratio scale. And then uh, the, the variation or the different uh, types of one-way analysis of variance also mirror the, the difference uh, in terms of the kinds of t-test. No? So if we have uh, independent samples t-test and paired samples t-test, we likewise have uh, versions of that when we talk about one-way ANOVA. So we have between subjects one-way analysis of variance and then repeated measures um, analysis of variance. Between subjects being sort of the counterpart of independent samples t-test while repeated measures one-way analysis of variance being the counterpart of paired samples t-test. And then we talked about correlation Specifically, uh, we talked about Pearson R correlation, and we use Pearson R correlation to examine, again, the relationship between two variables. But this time, uh, specifically for correlation, we really are not specifying which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable. So as far as, far as correlation is concerned, we're just interested in examining the relationship the association between two variables without having to specify which impacts which, um, which causes which, which influences which. So we're just interested in the relationship between these two. And specifically, we use correlation uh, to examine relationships of variables that are both continuous. So a continuous, um, and this one is also continuous.
All right. And then there is a another version of Pearson R, um, which practically is the same as Pearson R, or can also be called as Pearson R, but sometimes it also goes by the name of uh, point by serial correlation. And we use point by serial correlation, which is practically the same as Pearson R correlation when we want to examine the relationship between two variables, one of which being dichotomous um, and the other one being continuous. So in, in, in such cases, pwede rin ang point by serial correlation. Again, point by serial correlation is practically the same as Pearson R correlation. Now, because none of this is technically an independent variable or a dependent variable, that means to say that this can be switched. So, like what I said, the decision in terms of what analysis to use, half of it really depends on, one, how many variables are involved so far. We, we've been talking about various uh, statistical analysis that involves testing or, you know, that is dedicated to testing relationships between two variables only. The variation in the kind of analysis you will, you will make use of depends mostly on the kind of measurement that were used in order to account for the said variables. Um, so that means to say that, let's say, for example, we have two variables. I think there is a construct called pandemic anxiety. So let's just call it as pan -ax. So it is an anxiety that specifically is uh, experienced in the context of a pandemic. So if you have a high pandemic anxiety, what do you think will it likely lead to? What is a possible consequence of having pandemic anxiety? Well, of course, everyone is afraid, no? but who, um, who among you think that they're experiencing more relatively more anxiety or you know above than the usual anxiety over this pandemic and and what do you think are the consequences of experiencing such or maybe we can call it as a quality of sleep or qos quality of sleep which which may pertain partly to the fact that you are sleeping less or you could be sleeping but you wake up in the middle of the night or you wake up earlier than you intend or you sleep later than you intend and when you wake up you still feel tired and feel unrested so that would pertain to low quality of sleep so given our knowledge of um, these different analyses the point that i'm driving at is that considering um, this particular conceptualization these variables really do not determine which analysis you will do no because practically you can use any one of this in order to test this particular relationship. It all depends on how pandemic anxiety and quality of sleep was measured. So for example, if pandemic anxiety was, uh, let's say for example, measured as a categorical variable, so you simply identified people who have pandemic anxiety and people who do not have pandemic anxiety, and uh, quality of sleep was measured using a scale, thus resulting to some kind of a score. And um, of course, these individuals who experience pandemic anxiety and those who are not are different samples. Then what you will use is t-test for independent sample. If this is, for example, an experiment wherein you measured pre-test and post-test uh, measures of pandemic anxiety. So let's say, for example, you measured pandemic anxiety um, and then afterwards you introduced an intervention. For example, you made them watch this Netflix special entitled Pandemic and you think that watching that, especially nowadays, can create more pandemic anxiety. So it's like a before and after. Uh, and then uh, before watching the Netflix special pandemic, you measure the quality of sleep. And then after watching, you also measure the quality of sleep. I'm not sure if this is ethical, what I'm uh, talking about. Uh, then we use paired samples t-test. If pandemic anxiety, on the other hand, is not only a case of yes or no, maybe you have levels to it, um, it still is categorical. And let's say, for example, that 
pandemic anxiety it has three levels low pandemic anxiety average pandemic anxiety and high pandemic anxiety and quality of sleep remains to be continuous then what we will be using given that we have three levels of pandemic anxiety what we will be using now is one way analysis of variance it only depends now if the data set comes from the same sample or three separate samples um, and that will allow us to make the decision as to whether this is a uh, between subjects ANOVA or a, a repeated measures ANOVA. If pandemic anxiety and quality of sleep happen to be both continuous, uh, continuously measured, so meaning to say you did not categorize people as having pandemic anxiety or not, or high, average, or low pandemic anxiety, but instead pandemic anxiety was measured through a scale and the representation of the variation of pandemic anxiety are basically scores, which means to say that it's also continuous, similar to the quality of sleep, then what we can use is Pearson R correlation. Um, and then yet again, if pandemic anxiety is dichotomous and this is continuous, as much as we can use t-test but specifically you're not really interested in mean comparison this is not really the focal point of your research uh, you just want to see the association between the two then Pearson R particularly point by zero correlation can also be an option um, especially if you're not really particularly interested in suggesting that um, one causes the other so the point that I am trying to emphasize is that the choice of analysis that we will use is not so much dependent on what variables we are talking about because at any given time these variables can be measured in a number of ways um, and the measures that we make use of course some measures are more superior than the others um, and some measures are more appropriate than others depending on the re research objective. So the choice of what to use is really dependent on how these two variables are measured.